Wow. I want to start by reading out of Psalm 33. If you haven't read Psalm 33, you need to read it because it's so powerful. But I want to read three verses this morning. It says this, The Lord looks from heaven, he sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. Think about that. He sees you and he's fashioning your heart. Our responsibility is to let him do it. Amen? Amen. We don't always do that. We're not always connected to him to hear his voice. But that's not because he doesn't do it. It's because we're not listening. Is that right? Well, Deb and I are back from Israel. And I want to share one thing um, before we pray. Um, God, we, as Deb and I went over there and we met Brandon, Pastor Brandon from Indonesia there. Um, and one of the things we wanted to do, and I even asked for prayer about that, was that God would open the door and show us something miraculously. Well, let me tell you what happened. Um, we tried to make contact with Brian Slater. He was the guy that was here a couple of years ago and brought Nahum. Remember Nahum? Okay. And so we were trying to connect with him. And I was told that he might be in the States at the time that we were over there. So we got there early. We called Brian and he answers the phone and he says, oh, says, well, you guys are here today. Yep. Well, why don't you come over? We're going to do a soup kitchen. Oh, well, let's go do the soup kitchen. So Deb and Brandon and I got to go over there um, and serve Holocaust victims. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I'll not victims, I'm sorry, survivors. And it was one of the most blessed events that we could have um, done. Serving people that um, had to go through the Holocaust and um, you know, do different things. Some of them saw families pass, and, um, and we were able to serve them. And we did it as an extension of Calvary Chapel French Valley um, because we helped support some of Brian's work. And I just want you to know that God desires to be with you every step of your life. Every step. And he, he watches over us, and he fashions our heart. We just need to allow him to do that. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, as we come before you this day, we just, um, <laughs> just want to say you are awesome. We thank you, Father, because you know the beginning from the end. And you love us, Father. Even in our striving to be obedient, Lord, you just cover us with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, that this service today would honor you that you would be glorified. And we pray that as Pastor Rick comes up, that you would fill him to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. Bless our service, that it would be, Father, something that just is a sweet aroma unto you. And in Jesus' name do we pray, amen. amen. Well, um, I will say that Laura's birthday is tomorrow. So say, Woo! happy birthday, Laura. Of course, she walked out right as I was about to say that. Um, number of things going on in our church and you can always go to ccfv.life and you can um, hear what's going on, see what's going on and even watch it if you missed it and you want to re-see it because it's there, okay? But a couple of things you need to know, men's life groups and women's life groups are ongoing and so get and become a part of that. Meet studies are going on. I know in Hebrews, a lot of, a lot of um, good stuff is there and so Kevin's... Uh, uh, bringing that into focus for us. And then uh, next week is the men's breakfast. And men, if you've not been to one, you need to come. Um, not only is there good food, um, right? Yes. Nobody uh, even, uh, don't, uh, they, you don't think there's good food there? I was what? about visualizing it in my mind. There it is, see? <laughs> Clear your mind. Uh, uh, men's breakfast is next week. What a great time of getting together and fellowshipping. Um, we also have coming up a social Sunday next week on a Sunday. It's um, going to be at a place you can get in the back. Um, it's at these two guys' house. Ben, 
been in Vivian's house. So if you don't know, come and be a part of that. That's always fun. And then on the 23rd, there is a, a family barbecue planning meeting, okay? And that's at Larry and Cindy's house. Be a part of that because we have an Easter barbecue, and it's a great time to fellowship as well. A lot of neat things to be able to fellowship. Tonight is the Future Prophecy, Future Today Prophecy meeting. Um, Pastor Rick's got a little message, and then we'll share about um, current events and might even talk a little bit about what's going on in Israel from our pers Deb's and my perspective. So come and be a part of that. Starts at 6 o'clock. Always a great time to be able to do that. And then I, I want us to pray again for our government. Lots going on, you know. President Trump in his... Uh, um, State of the Union, um, I was going to say speech of the Union, I knew that wasn't right. State of the Union message had a clear message, you know, and he said to the Christian evangelicals, I'll never leave you, I'll be there. In other words, he supports that. So I want to throw out to you, um, I don't care if you like him or not, I really don't. What I do care about is that you're praying for him, because the things that he needs to make decisions on, he needs your prayer support. And I don't know if you saw, but there were congressmen that went up and prayed over him. And there's a lot of evangelicals that pray for him. I pray for him. And I want you all to pray for him. And we're going to pray for him here in a minute, as well as the rest of the government. If you haven't been reading about what's going on in the government, I think Pastor Rick even has a little message about that today. Um, pay attention. You know, our nation needs a lot of help. And so... We are prayer warriors, and we should be in prayer for our nation. Israel, uh, I know I'm taking a little bit of time, but Pastor Rick loves it when I do this. Um, Deb and I got to uh, go and listen to this um, um, uh, Jew that um, was not messianic. He knew more about the Bible He's orthodox. He knew more about the Bible than I guarantee you anybody sitting here. He could call it from memory. The one thing that he didn't have was completeness. He did not believe that what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, was accurate. And I share that with you because my heart grieved listening to him. And it, and it should grieve us for Israel because there's so much secularism and so, more, so much orthodox belief that people are missing their savior. And if you didn't know, Jesus came through the Jewish um, um, culture. And so we need to be in prayer for Israel. So we're gonna close praying for our government and Israel. And then uh, before David and the team leads in worship, we'll have you stand and greet one another. Let's pray. Father, again, we just come and just say thank you that you are God. I pray, Father, today that as we worship you in our worship, as we worship you in our message, in our tithing, you would be glorified. And we do lift up the United States, Father. We pray for revival to come. We pray for our president that he would come to know you so deeply that he could do nothing but function, Father, on his knees before you. We pray for our Congress and we pray, Father, for the leaders of states that they would be convicted of heart to turn from their evil ways and repent and see you, Father. Bless this nation that we could see your son reign. Pray for Israel, Father, that you would touch those people and take the veil off of their eyes that they would see their Messiah. Lord, this is your church. We desire to serve you. Help us to be obedient. In Jesus' name do we pray, amen.